So this is what happened. 10 days ago, I entered a huge GPP. First place wins a quarter million dollars. That was the week 13 Monday night football game. Bills versus Niners uh, showdown GPP. And I won first place, but in a very rare circumstance, um, and I think I covered this last week's DFS video, in a rare circumstance, it was a 209-way tie. So we had to split base, just rounding, rounding numbers, half a million dollars with 200 people. So <laughs> it was a bittersweet win. Like I took down a big GPP. It was always my goal. Uh, it's been a goal for almost a decade to do that, and I finally did it, but it was bittersweet. And Mike Mittal, uh, Couch co-founder, my buddy, uh, co-host of the podcast, he was saying, you're going to be there again. He's like, you're going to be up there again first place. You, you'll be back there again. And just 10 days later, which is last night, I entered a decent-sized GPP, 20,000 people, and I took it down. Same thing. Prime time, showdown, GPP. And this time I'm very satisfied. Uh, it was a tie, um, but it was okay. It was only a 14-way tie. I'm totally fine with that. First place was a 50K prize. So we split that amongst 14 people. I won 6,000 and I'm very pleased and I had to go live to do the live stream slash podcast last night and I'll link that below in the description if you want to check out my reaction and if you guys watch the Chargers uh, Raiders game you would know how crazy that last sequence was and just imagine for me how crazy it was with Herbert throwing that lawn bomb to Gaiden he's getting tackled and then all that chaos to ensue all in overtime so all uh, a bunch of craziness but um, point being I won the GPP I'm very satisfied with the win it's not bittersweet like it was last week where I expected to win like 30,000 50,000 or a quarter million and I only ended up winning 2k and so here we are uh, at 6k and uh, it's very lovely and um, yeah it was a it was a it was a great live stream I, I thanked you guys quite a bit for the support so thank you so much uh, you know you got crazy goals like like me that I set forth in a warped weird reality it's not even realistic and uh, to accomplish these crazy goals and thanks to you guys for supporting all the way and uh, not letting me quit you know I'm not a quitter uh, but we came close to quitting a few times with the brand and with DFS and everything and uh, we didn't quit and look at us here here we go so this is my lineup right here just so you can see the whole thing i'll just zoom down a little bit um so yeah here it is herbert at the captain waller jacobs henry um johnson and guyton and uh yeah hit first place so i did want to really quick on this video talk about the saturday slate two game slate and then we'll talk about the main slate as well um, by the way, for those of you tuning in the first time to this channel, my name is Hussein the Brain, and you're watching Fantasy Couch. Make sure you do subscribe and have bell notifications turned on so you don't miss future videos. We have the best waiver videos, best draft videos, and best DFS videos. So here we go. For slates like this, when I do videos, what I usually like to do is just share my fades because there's only two games. So if you just fade a couple players, a handful of players, it really narrows down who you can pick. You can only pick four quarterbacks, right? So if we can narrow, it up, narrow that down to three, we're getting rid of 25% of the quarterbacks. And so, yeah, this is it's pretty basic and whatnot, uh, but I, I do like this strategy and hopefully it will help you if you do decide to play the Saturday slate. So my fade is going to be Teddy Bridgewater. He's a good quarterback. He will put up good points. But I've never seen this man this year um, just shatter expectations and finish as QB1. As in, I've never seen him have that tremendous upside. And because of that, 
we need to pick the best quarterback in this slate. And I don't think that's going to be Teddy Bridgewater. Also, I don't think he'll be the worst quarterback, but this is all about GPPs. We're focused on GPPs. We're focused on contrarian picks, high upside risky picks, and punt picks. And Teddy Ridgewater doesn't fit into any of those categories for me in this two-game slate. The two games are Bills versus Broncos, Panthers versus Packers. So, yes, I would rather have Drew Locke for 200 cheaper or Josh Allen, who's been insane this year, or Aaron Rodgers, who's also been insane this year and has a high floor. I'd rather have those three guys. So, Bridgewater, fade. For running backs, my fade is going to be Melvin Gordon. Same exact thing as Teddy Bridgewater. He's good. He'll probably do okay. Uh, but he's never showed us any upside. I don't think he has that home run ability when it comes to fantasy points. I'm just strictly, strictly fantasy. He's only done it once, and that was against the Jets, 28.8 points, which is a type of score that would be well way over value and could finish as like a RB1 or RB3 of the week. And that came against the Jets. Other than that, what was his second highest? Hasn't even eclipsed 20 points, and that's on DraftKings where you get the 100 point. He got the 100 yard bonus where he got 100 yards against the Chiefs. Never got 20 plus points this year ever. This is full PPR too, except week four against the Jets. That was a Thursday night game, weird game. All Every Thursday night game is weird. Every Jets game is weird. So he's my fade for running back, and that's it. Um... Just to keep, just to go over some quick news, Melvin Gordon and Lindsey are both technically questionable. Uh, for wide receivers, I have no fades. I feel like, you know, if you're doing multi entry, you can really go with anybody. Um, keep tabs on John Brown. I guess keep tabs on Curtis Samuel. He's questionable. For tight ends, another basic advice for you I would fade all. Panthers tight ends, and so the number one guy is uh, I almost forgot his name. Ian <laughs> Ian Smith. What's his? Oh, I can't. I can't believe I'm forgetting his name. Ian Thomas, right? Ian Thomas. God, what is his name? Yeah, Ian Thomas. Okay, at least I got it right. Uh, Ian Thomas will be the main one you would pick. So I would fade him if Curtis Samuel is playing. If Curtis Samuel is out, I suppose there is an argument to be made to play Ian Thomas, and I know people still wouldn't like him nor trust him. And for defenses, of course, we're going to fade the Panthers' D. The Green Bay defense is literally, technically, factually, the worst matchup. They have the highest floor. Uh, they don't make mistakes, only mistakes, only turnover game I've seen from the Packers that I remember just off the top of my head was against the Bucks. Like after, they, they just don't make any dumb mistakes. They don't turn the ball over and look, they're literally the worst matchup to face. So Panthers D I would fade no matter how bold you're going. If you guys watch my videos, you guys know I, I go bold quite often. I'm all about the contrarian pick and uh, I make a lot of crazy, stupid picks that sometimes work out. That's the GPP life. That's the life we live. This is the GPP way. All right, guys, moving on to the main slate. This is Sunday slate. Um, Lots of good elite quarterbacks to choose from, but we don't go over too many obvious picks. Um, not often, by the way. Um, so uh, the first guy I want to talk about is Jared Goff. Now, he's not the ideal quarterback to pick in a GPP. He's not the perfect QB. And I don't believe he's got a good shot at finishing as the best quarterback this week. But because his price isn't too high, he still could work out. Jared Goff will be very good for one quarter, maybe three quarters, and then that's it. The game will be over. Uh, Rams have three running backs they've used in the past. It started off with the Malcolm Brown show. Then the show turned over to be the Daryl Hendo show. And now it's definitely for sure locked in at this spot is the Cam Akers show. So they've had three running backs that have been good. 
and so you got the run game, you got the game script, and then we're going to probably see a huge lead by the Rams. Rams D is amazing, by the way, and it's going to look pretty good against the Jets' offense. Um, yeah, you know, just like we saw Russell Wilson last week. So Jared, got, he threw four touchdowns, not a lot of yards, and then that was it. It was Geno Smith from there on. Jared Goff, same thing. We might see three touchdowns and be like, peace. Whoever the backup is on the Rams, we might see him. And so, what? in short, what I'm trying to say is Goff will do good. He won't be the best quarterback this week, which is what we'd hope for. Um, but because of his price, he still can work and cash in and and take, uh, and take a, a big GPP. He can take down a big GPP. But not perfect, not ideal. I'd probably rather look someplace else. Especially when you're looking at Goff and you see, oh, the Jets. Um, you see him playing against the Jets, and, and some people might think that's better than it actually is. And that's probably why it's not ranked that high. It's because you don't have to throw against the Jets any game. They're literally the worst team. They got the worst record, which means they're always playing from behind. So it's more of a let's run the clock out. Let's run the ball. We could see Malcolm Brown a lot is what I'm trying to say. So I'm looking for these three cheap guys here. And it's very difficult to recommend dumb, crazy picks like this to you guys. But I, I just... I have to at least consider Matt Ryan is just how I've been doing it. And it's he's hit before. Now, since this time, the Falcons offense and Matt Ryan has been totally garbage. They have no spark. Julio Jones is out. Um, and I think it was this game here. So everyone was down on Matt Ryan. He was putting up 10 fantasy points a game. And then week six, I think I put him on the thumbnail for this video, and he was the best quarterback. And I stacked him with Julio Jones, and he absolutely killed it against the Vikings. Now, that is more unlikely this week. I really do think the Falcons' offense is just is not looking good. Like That's my opinion as well, as well as everyone else's opinion and what's going on. And I do think Matt Ryan probably isn't going to do well this week against the Bucks, But there is a sliver of hope. Why? Because it's Matt Ryan. Because he has Calvin Ridley. And because the Buccaneers' run defense is good. But their pass defense has been exposed a couple times recently. Jared Goff and the Rams did it. And who, who else just did it? Tyreek Hill. That's right. Tyreek Hill. Destroyed destroyed the box like absolutely kill him what did didn't he have like 30 points at 30 fantasy points at halftime oh my god that was scary <laughs> if you're going up against Tyree kill man had like 50 fantasy points it, it was crazy um or maybe at 30 fantasy points like the first quarter or something like it was really crazy like that something like that yeah um so yeah i think there is a sliver of hope i also do like nick mullins Going against the Cowboys. The Cowboys suck. Big, big news alert, by the way. Yes, Cowboys, they're not good. <laughs> um, he hasn't been the QB this week, this year that has shown us upside. He showed a little bit against the Bills game. A lot of that was garbage time. I was watching that game close because that was that last GPP I won. Um, but, he, but he has shown a, a couple times in the past when Jimmy G was hurt, that he can do some things. So we'll see. Um, I think I'm, I'm really recommending him because of the price, 5100 going against the Cowboys. And then a super punt is Chase Daniel. We don't know if Stafford is going to play, but we'll see. And if he doesn't, I think Chase Daniel has a sweet matchup, um, and you can consider him as a nothing more than a punt. Okay, it's, the video is going to get better, guys. Trust me. <laughs> For running max, I think Kamara is going to be chalk. Everything's great. Drew Brees is back. Mike Thomas is out. Going up against the Chiefs. Everything lines up. And, I mean, everyone knows what I'm getting at, right? Drew Brees, with Drew Brees, he's better. With Taysom Hill, he's worse. With, with, he's worse. With Drew Brees, he gets more targets in the pass game. I think everyone knows what I'm talking about. I, I think it's obvious, and that's why it's chalk. I really don't have to get into that, I don't think. If I do, then I guess he's not as chalky. But I don't. 
have to explain why Kamara is so good. The price is great. He's great. And Drew Brees is back. He's going to be chalk. He's a guy that I'm going to have to seriously consider, even in GPPs. Uh, but I make some crazy picks, enough crazy picks that I can eat a little bit of chalk, even if it's uh, Alvin Kamara chalk. I can do it. I can do it. Can you? We'll see. J.K. Dobbins, 5,900 going against the Jaguars. I like this guy. Um, yeah, that's my analysis. Drake, just wanted to say really quickly, need some water. There's a chance Chase Edmonds doesn't play. I think it's a very tiny chance, though. He practiced today or he was seen at practice today. So seeming like Chase Edmonds is going to play. Just wanted to point that out there. Edmonds technically questionable. If he doesn't play, Drake would be a great play. Um, back to the 2019 Drake, that little run we had towards the end with the Cardinals. That's what we're looking at here. Um, we also got Jeff Wilson. Now Mostert is off the injury report, has no injury designation. But still, Jeff Wilson is going up against the Cowboys. He's 5,100. And now we have a chalky, chalky, chalk, chalk, chalk. Uh, Fournettetet, Lenny Fournettetet is 4,500 going against the Falcons. Rojo is out. He's on that special reserve list. And even though Arians hates Fournette, He's going to be the man this week. He's going to be the workhorse. 4,500. Do you want to eat chalk? Well, here it is, guys. Super cheap. Uh, workhorse running back, supposedly, reportedly, going against the Falcons. And then we have Gus Edwards, 4,400, going against the Jags. By the way, the Jags suck. And uh, in the 4K club, which I won't be considering any of these guys, but we, we're making the 4K club a thing. We got Malcolm Brown, 4K. We got um, Jordan Wilkins because of the game script. We might see him a little bit. We haven't seen him in a while, though. Uh, he's a 4K Colts running back going against the Texans. Colts third strain running back going against the te Texans. I want to make sure I make that clear so I don't hype him up too much. And then we got Frank Gore. Uh, you really don't want to start this guy at all. I mean, you know what? I'll, let's just let's, let's take off Frank Gore. <laughs> let's take off Frank Gore from the 4K club. Sorry, man. I, I love Frank Gore, Hall of Famer. Um, just I can't even mention him. So just scratch that. Pretend to strike that from the record, Your Honor. Get that out of here. Uh, for wide receivers, here we go. Here we go. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. This one right here. Are you guys ready? Everyone hates him. I I mentioned this like one out of four videos. I'm in a great situation, a fortunate situation to where I don't have to research what public perception is. Because all my followers and the community I talk to, I'm I'm always talking to you guys. I'm also on Twitter just looking at random tweets, which anybody can do. Everyone hates this guy. Everyone is worried about Tyler Lockett. Everyone's asking me this week, should I start him or this other wide receiver? Public perception is very low with Lockett this week. Okay? He still looks good. Just Russell Wilson's not doing as well. And the plays are more for Metcalf. Price, not terribly expensive, but it's not cheap either. It's 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 a little bit more on the expensive side, I would say, than the cheap side. I would say, you know, if the price was 6500 or 6300, I'd be like, okay, you know, it's it's he's not expensive. So he's a couple hundred bucks more expensive than people would like to see. Because of the price, because of public perception, because of the perceived matchup, Tyler Lockett going against the red matchup, 7th, the 7th best defense when it comes to uh, fantasy points allowed. They allow the seventh least amount of fantasy points to the wide receiver position. He's going to be contrarian. You're going to get Lockett at contrarian ownership 
Also, his matchup, I think they're going to focus on Metcalf. He's going to likely be matched up against the weakest cornerback if he's playing the slot. Just He just needs the plays. He just needs Wilson to play well. He just needs the targets. And if he can get that, we've seen in the past Tyler Lockett finish as a wide receiver one multiple times, right? Look at it. Arizona. 56 fantasy points just a few weeks ago, week seven. Cowboys, 40 fantasy points week three. Okay, and we've seen him have 20-point fantasy performances. We've seen Russell Wilson play well. Tyler Lockett is my number one wide receiver that I'm recommending for GPPs. Complete package. Is it risky? Are you going to like doing it? No, you'll probably throw up in your mouth, um, but it's okay. I did the same thing when I picked Matt Ryan week six. Don't worry. Um, it was very scary. I spent a lot of time, you know, I'm just going to admit it. I'm a human. I spent a lot of time researching reasons to keep Matt Ryan out of that week six video because I knew people would make fun of me and um, I couldn't find any reason to take him out. And so I left him in. And it worked out. Uh, Lockett, you know, similar situation to where a lot of people right now hate him. But I'd be recommending him for GPPs. Cash games don't do it. Um, this is not a recommendation or nothing. I did want to just talk about Scary Terry McLaurin really quick. 6,600 going against the Seahawks. Um, it's... I've seen two arguments, right? Dwayne Haskins helps him and doesn't help him. Now, if you look at the stats or whatever the heck you're going to pull up the numbers, Dwayne Haskins helps him. He's targeted him more. Is more target share, blah, 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 blah. Dwayne Haskins overall hurts McLaurin a little bit. It, it really does because if you've seen Dwayne Haskins play, he sucks. And McLaurin gets the targets, and they're not quality targets because Haskins sucks. So I'm not going to say that Haskins makes McLaurin not a, like he he kills McLaurin's value. No, but I would say he hurts him. Even with that being said, he's still gonna get targets, and McLaurin is borderline elite talent at wide receiver. Uh, if if he was on in another situation or had another quarterback, this guy might be a top five wide receiver right now in the league. I'd say he's, you know he's right there at the top ten ish already. That's how good he is. And um, you know, basically that's all I want to talk about really quick. Uh, just found an excuse to talk about Mick Lauren with the Dwayne Haskins starting. By the way, if you haven't heard, Alex Smith has been ruled out, so Haskins is starting for Washington week 15 against the Seahawks. Let's run through these other GPP picks at wide receiver. People like Hilton. So what do we do? We go with Michael Pittman Jr., baby. 4,800. We know he's a talent. Let's see what he can do against the Texans. Maybe they focus on stopping Hilton, uh, but they're probably stupid and won't do anything. So um, GPP, cheap wide receiver, Pittman going against the Texans. At 4,500, we got CeeDee Lamb, who hasn't done anything lately. But I think against the Niners, if he's playing from the slot, he can get some manufactured plays too. Maybe some screens, maybe some jet sweeps, maybe you know some rub plays, something like that. And then you might even get a, a deep ball or two. And that's CeeDee Lamb right there, 4,500, going against the Niners. Playing from the slot could really work out. It worked out for Cole Beasley a couple weeks ago. As I know, as you know, everyone knows Beasley. And in sticking in the same game, guys, we got Kendrick Bourne, 4,100. No Debo Samuel. Kendrick Bourne could be the man. Look at these. Let me read off these targets. Um, starting week eight, 10 targets, then five, five, six, and then recently seven this past week. So if a guy can get you six, seven targets, maybe more, possibly more against the Cowboys, we don't see a lot of punts by the Niners or mistakes, then that's going to bring back value just off the targets alone, 4100 It's not minimum price or anything, but for this slate, I would say it's, it's pretty close to minimum price. 
Um, it's very cheap. Minimum price would be 3K technically, and I don't think I'm picking any 3K wide receivers. Moving on to tight end, I, I'd like to sit here and tell you not to pick Kelsey because his value is not going to hit. But realistically, if you're doing multiple lineups, you're going to have to consider Kelsey, especially if you pick Mahomes. He's just that good. He's absolutely berserk. I don't think he's going to reach value, though. Um, but even when I say that, I might still pick Kelsey. He's just that freaking good. Um, but if you're doing just one lineup for GPP, you know, you want to stick to that single entry lineups. And I probably wouldn't pick Kelsey. I, I think you're going to waste a pick on him, just hoping he gets another 30-point performance. Um, instead, go with a guy like Mark Andrews, who's going to get his targets. And I think the Jaguars, everyone knows he's going to get targets in the red zone, in the end zone. And uh, I don't know if they're going to stop him, though. So that's the second most expensive tight end. And he's significantly cheaper. He's 2,500 cheaper. Like, that's a huge percentage. Um, and sure, that percentage is re reflected in the points per game. But Lamar Jackson is back, baby. And he's got like, some great matchups. And we're looking at the future, not in the past. So I think Mark Andrews has a better chance of returning value than Kelsey. Um, who else did I write down? Dallas Goddard, I was a little surprised at his price. I found 3900 to be cheap because just how many targets he's been getting, even with Ertz back. So I do have him here. And then we have a guy that everyone's going to recognize with Kyle Rudolph out. Irv Smith Jr., 3600 going against the Bears. Um, here's, another, here's, a, here's a really stupid one. Hayden Hurst, I think he's got a good matchup and he can do some things. I... I just like he hasn't been looking good. Matt Ryan hasn't been looking good. There hasn't been a lot of explosive plays, no big plays, no big passing routes run by Hurst. Um, and so it's not looking good. But in another dimension, if Matt Ryan were playing like Matt Ryan and Hayden Hurst was somehow like good, like kind of how he was during this stretch, when it was like week, week six, seven, eight, nine then um, I would love Hayden Hurst at this price. So this one's super contrarian. It's pretty dumb. It's, it's, pretty, it's pretty bold, and it probably won't work out. But just one to kind of consider. All the other tight ends I put out there I think are much more obvious. And so this one I want to put out there is actually the least, least like, I kind of like Tyler Lockett in a way, but much cheaper. Um, and then we got Cole Komet, who... Um, yeah, Hayden Hurst is much more hated than than Komet, trust me. Uh, Cole Komet, seven targets week 13, seven targets week 14. He could be a very valuable tight end. We'll see. Tight ends, you know how it is. It's, it's a crapshoot out there. For defenses, I'm going to find a way to squeeze the Rams D in. They're like the best defense, and they're going against like the worst team. Uh, it's pretty obvious. I think their price at 4500 is super expensive. Is still cheap. <laughs> that's how that's how good uh, the Rams D is. But I did want to give you guys some other options really quick. Ravens D going against the Jags, 3,800. You know, all it takes is a pick six or something or a fumble recover for a touchdown to be like, oh, this defense is better than the Rams. And that could happen. Um, for the Colts, I always liked them this week. But DeForest Buckner is questionable with an ankle injury. And I really think he makes a big difference. So uh, you can consider the Colts D if Buckner is playing. If Buckner is out, I wouldn't touch the Colts D. It's a morning game, so we would know in time. You're able to pick them and know or swap them out. We have enough time because they play early. Colts Texans, that is. And for 3,100, we got the Seahawks D going against Dwayne Haskins. Dwayne Haskins is not a good quarterback. He sucks. And uh, Washington D going against Wilson, who hasn't been playing well. This is Now, I want to consider these guys, but I'm giving you cheap options just in case. And then, uh, for some reason, I got the Falcons here if you really need a cheap option. But I wouldn't. I wouldn't do it. <laughs> 2,300 going against the Bucks. Yeah, so I'm sticking here. You know, Seahawks D, maybe Ravens, definitely Rams D. I'm planning on spending up, but I always do want to give you guys some cheaper options there. All right, guys, make sure you are subscribed.
to uh, this YouTube channel. Subscribe to our second YouTube channel as well, Fantasy Couch Podcast. And I'll link that below in the description uh, to the latest podcast when I reacted to winning and taking down that GPP. Good luck this week, everybody. I'm going to head on over to the Patreon live stream. We do it every Friday evening.